I'm sure that we've all looked up on a clear day to see contrails streaking across the sky. Some see them as an attractive feature of commercial aviation, while others see a vast government conspiracy to seed rain clouds and control the population. While the validity of these theories is dubious at best, there is in fact a sinister side to these wispy white trails. Contrails directly expedite the effects of climate change, and their impact is often overshadowed by talks of carbon emissions. However, mitigating the creation of contrails might just be one of the easiest ways for commercial aviation to limit its environmental impact. Let me explain. The creation of contrails, short for condensation trails, requires three main ingredients, water, soot, and cool air. Essentially, when water vapor is ejected from the back of an engine, it condenses and freezes over soot particles in the air, creating tiny ice crystals. This process only occurs when the air is particularly cool, and 25,000 feet is about the altitude at which contrails will start to form. While contrails might appear harmless, they directly contribute to the greenhouse effect. They essentially act as artificial clouds, creating a thermal blanket across the planet that traps in heat due to a process known as serious radiative forcing. Essentially, heat that's been reflected off the surface of the Earth and is heading back out to space is blocked from leaving the atmosphere. Luckily, the reflective nature of contrails helps to prevent some light that's coming in from space from ever reaching the surface. So, during the daytime, contrails have a net neutral effect on warming. But problems emerge when the sun isn't up. Red-eye flights are very popular. They can be cheap, allow you to maintain a fairly normal sleep schedule, and keep you off a plane during a typical 9 to 5 workday. However, Unlike daytime contrails, which create both a warming and cooling effect, those created at night only result in warming. This impact is amplified in highly trafficked areas, where multiple contrails can merge and create up to 38,000 square miles of coverage in a day. And given the rapid increase in global aviation demand, the total amount of contrails is projected to increase fourfold by 2050. Now, you might be wondering, how detrimental could a few extra clouds really be? And the answer is actually a bit frightening. One widely accepted study suggests that one day's worth of contrails has a greater atmospheric impact than all accumulated carbon emissions since the birth of aviation. What's more, some research has concluded that their effects may reduce diurnal temperature differences by three degrees Celsius. In layman's terms, that means that contrails are leading to a much narrower gap between daytime and nighttime temperatures. While this might seem alarming, the bright side is that contrails are short-lived in nature. Unlike CO2, which lingers in the atmosphere indefinitely, once a contrail disappears, its environmental impact disappears with it. This means that lessening the formation of contrails ought to be a priority if the industry is to reduce its fairly hefty environmental footprint. But doing so is no easy task. Experts have proposed several solutions to the contrail problem, but none without potential setbacks. As previously mentioned, altitude plays an essential role in the formation of contrails. So one approach might include decreasing the standard cruising altitude to below 25,000 feet. While this may seem fairly easy and effective, it is actually an environmental double-edged sword. Flying at lower altitudes increases air resistance and makes a plane less efficient. Essentially, this solution eliminates contrails, but also increases CO2 emissions, a perilous trade-off to say the least. An alternative mitigation approach comes by way of completely changing the types of fuels that airplanes use. 
Using effective biofuels, hydrogen fuels, or liquid natural gas solutions will not only decrease carbon emissions, but will also reduce the volume of soot particles that's created by burning traditional kerosene. In turn, water vapor will have fewer surfaces to cling to, reducing contrail formation. While widespread adoption of alternative fuels would be extremely difficult and costly, it is still feasible. However, taking these measures alone still wouldn't be enough since they don't completely eliminate contrails. But there's one final approach that might prove to be the most effective, limiting the volume of nighttime flights. What's great about this approach is that we need not rely on airlines to make the change. The change can be consumer driven. Passengers like you can actively choose to fly during the day. And if enough conscious consumers choose to do so, demand for red-eye flights will fall. Ultimately, this will force airlines to cut back on nighttime scheduling. But if we're going to change our habits, we've got to do it now. Agencies that have been tasked with studying aviation's role in the climate crisis have been slow to acknowledge the role of contrails in warming the planet, costing us valuable time. Unless we take decisive action, we'll swiftly surpass the one and a half degree temperature increase that will lead to irreversible climate catastrophe. And while I'm sure everyone here loves airplanes and aviation, it's time for us to confront the harsh reality of the situation and do our part to help avoid the consequences. Now, I don't want to downplay the severity of this problem. It's clear that it's a problem that needs to be addressed, and it's something that you and I can actively work to rectify. But everybody likes a good contrail conspiracy theory, so leave your best ones down in the comments. Thanks so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.